If you have eyes, chances are you see the faces of models and actors on a daily basis and you'll notice almost universally that they have high cheekbones, a nice strong jawline and a projecting side profile. And then you look in the mirror and you think, fuck what went wrong. Not me though. To be honest with you, I get a little bit turned on, I'm not gonna lie. I'm fucking kidding. Just because my channel is called Luxmax doesn't mean I'm narcissistic. Now this kind of media inflicted body dysmorphia has led to a breeding ground of scams, lies and severe internet retardation, all varied around improving the face. Whether it be through facial exercises, massaging your face or some Liminal programming? You know, when you see the stuff you think, Coy, it, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that all of this is complete bullshit. But unfortunately, with its ever growing popularity, orthotropics, the science of correct facial growth, or most commonly known as mewing, is often mixed into the same bucket. Hence, it may be written off or dismissed by many who in turn favour the already established idea that genetics is the totaling factor in facial development. And that if you wish to correct your teeth or misalignment in your bite, that orthodontics is the only way. And even further, if you wish to correct your face, then it's either surgery or... Well, there's, there's nothing else, you're just fucked. But this couldn't be further from the truth. Now inherently there is a limit to how far genetics will influence the outcome of your facial aesthetics. Now obviously if you are grossly obese, don't expect to be walking around with a crimson chin by mewing. You need to lose weight. So what is this all about? How does the tongue affect your face? If you look at indigenous tribes and assess ancient skulls, you'll find that they will always have a full set of teeth wisdom teeth included, and an absence of dental issues such as crooked teeth or bite misalignment. And this is because these people have commonly lived a life closest to our design purpose. From birth, being breastfed creates a suction hole in babies, training them the correct swallowing pattern and forces the tongue on the roof of the mouth 24-7, and so the mothers breastfeed the child until it is absolutely necessary that the baby consumes foods. And when the baby does consume foods, all of which would be considerably harder than the foods deemed suitable for babies in today's society. But what most people don't realise is that these foods are damaging for our baby's development. And babies can eat much harder foods than you'd think. You know, they're strong. Babies can go through some vigorous shit. For example, whether it's being dropped or receiving other forms of force. Just so we're all clear here. No, I'm not suggesting you start using your baby as a punching bag or anything, but this is simply how babies are designed, how humans are designed to develop in the wild. Therefore, these hard foods develop the jaw properly, and most importantly, widen the palate, encouraging a tongue in the roof of the mouth posture, which is continued throughout normal development. All the while, the tongue acts as a support beam for the rest of your facial development. Unfortunately, the luxury and lavish lifestyle awarded to us today comes at a cost. Indoors, we are not often exposed to the outside from birth, thus our body never adapts to the environment around us and many people have hay fever or the common cold which spreads due to people remaining in close proximity to each other. With all of these issues blocking the nasal passages, we are faced with either breathing through the mouth or dying. I know which one I'd prefer. And when you breathe through the mouth, not only do you not filter the air properly, but you remove the support of the tongue and the palate. In physics, Wolf's Law states that bone in any person or animal will adapt to the forces it is placed under, much like how the slight force of wind over time carves rocks. The most beautiful people you see no doubt would have kept good oral posture and body posture their entire lives, chewed sufficiently hard foods and breathed through their nose and therefore were allowed to reach their genetic potential. Take away these habits and regardless of genetics you're left with something akin to the leaning tower of Pisa. You know the foundations weren't quite strong enough, the structure is all collapsing or just about hanging on. And unless something is done about it sooner or later, something's gonna give out. In people, this is sleep apnea, brought upon by a narrow airway. TMJ as a result of improper jaw alignment and other issues caused by a buildup of pressure in the skull. So right now, you're probably watching this. You're 18 years old, you're a big boy, and you're thinking to yourself, 
I'm fucked. Now that I've broken your reality to which you perceive facial development, I suppose it would be a little bit scummy if I just ended the video. I wouldn't really do you dirty like that. I'm here for you, mate. Between children and adults, the only difference between bone malleability is that when you reach adulthood, bone density increases and therefore changes in the skull will change much slower but still consistently over time. There isn't an overnight solution for a model jawline, neither is it guaranteed that you'll ever get the same facial development as a model. Although if you stick with it I can guarantee that if right now people are mistaking you for the Grinch, one day you'll be slaying puss in the old people's home. Now there's three things to remember, teeth together, lips together, tongue on the roof of the mouth, and don't mouth breathe. If you do, they say John Mew will appear on the end of your bed while you're sleeping and whisper, it's over. Isn't that a picture of nightmares? In order to achieve ideal tongue posture, first you must smile as wide as you can, then swallow, no homo. This will force the tongue on the roof of the mouth. Next you want to push upwards from this position, ensuring the back third of the tongue is in firm contact with the soft palate. Congratulations, you now have correct tongue posture. Some shortcomings are that your palate may be too narrow to fit the full tongue on the roof of the mouth, or that due to having a recessed subhuman maxilla, you'll cut off the airway when placing the back third of the tongue on the palate. However, with time this will subside and the airway will open up as your palate widens. Keeping the tongue it up is often the hardest part of mewing for most people. But don't worry, you're not most people, you just have to push through it. A tip on achieving ideal tongue posture which I discovered courtesy of Astro Sky is to say the word sing. The muscle movement involved with pronouncing the NG sound forces the back third of the tongue onto the palate and by remembering this movement you can more easily hold ideal oral posture. Now there's a lot more to mewing besides tongue posture which I'll get into in the next part of the video. Unfortunately, YouTube doesn't allow longer videos in new channels. Fortunately, this means I can milk the idea for a while to keep you coming back. But in all seriousness, subscribe and as YouTube likes to put it, ring the bell in order to be notified when my next video on mewing. Or alternatively, you could just say fuck that bro and check out the official Orthotropics YouTube channel instead. You'll see that Mike Mew has just gone against the GDC and come out on top. Who's your daddy? <laughs> that was really creepy, I'll take that back. This has been Lux Max.